Hey, it's Ken Lewis. Welcome to Mixing Night. Today I'm going to talk about the differences between a good mix and a great mix and give you three tips on how to get from one to the other. So what does a great mix even mean? I mean, where is the bar set? How do you know? Uh, to me, I think the difference between what makes a great professional mixer is we have a very high batting average at having the ability to bring out the emotion in a song. Whatever that emotion is, if it's a heart-wrenching ballad, then my mix is going to pull on the heartstrings. If it's a club track, then I better figure out a way as a mixer to make sure that you want to go to the club and get on the dance floor when you're there. So I think it's all about, most importantly, tapping into the emotion and remembering that the frequencies and the ratios and all of those things are tools. Turn the tech brain off anytime that you can. Focus on the music, focus on the creativity, and just listen. Ask yourself, what does the song need? Let the song answer you. It's not, oh, the song needs more 100 hertz in the kick drum. It could possibly be, oh, the song needs more push in the low end. And that might be more kick. It might be turn it up or just turn up the low end. It might be more bass. And asking yourself what the song needs instead of analyzing the frequency content might get you there faster. Now that you know what to look and listen for in a great mix, let me give you three more tips to help you get your mix from good to great. Number one, balances. Very important. Any pro will tell you, the most important thing is finding those right balances between the drums and bass and vocals and guitars. And even within the drum kit, you know, making sure you have enough hi-hat, your cymbals are audible, all of those things go into individual balances and overall balances, which are the most number one important thing about any mix. The plugins come secondary. The EQs and compression only help you lock in fine tuning of those balances. A lot of people try and carve what they need with an equalizer when all you really need to do is move the fader a little bit and you've got it. Number two, I would say lyrics and vocal performance. So as a mixer, it's not your job to make sure the vocal was performed great, but it is your job to make sure a great performance shines as much as possible. So make sure all of those lyrics are as audible as possible, and make sure that that feels like one vocal performance from the beginning to the end of the song. Nothing jumps out and sounds out of place. Everything sounds right where it needs to be, and you're right in the pocket. Number three, arrangement. So important, so much more of a production thing than a mixing thing, but if you as a mixer have freedom to uh, play with the arrangement, and a lot of times I do, especially if I'm producing as well, then a great arrangement always leads to a great mix. A bad arrangement leads to a really struggling day on the mix. And it's usually one of two culprits. You either have underproduced what you have, you have this idea in your head of this giant vocal chorus, but you've only got one layer of harmony vocals and you don't know why your chorus doesn't sound as big as Katy Perry's or whoever. And the, the flip side of that is that you have crammed so many things into your arrangement that all of the best ideas are being stepped on by the things that you don't really need to be there. And space is so important in a song. So I play the what can you mute game and I go through my mix or my production or whatever I'm working on, and I just go through and I mute one track as the mix is almost finished, and I see how does it hit. And I, and I go like, is that better or worse? And I guarantee you, if you feel like your production might be a little bit too full, then play the what can you mute game and you're going to be able to clean up your production and really focus your ideas into the most important ones. All right, now you can use these tips to take your own mix from good to great. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. My YouTube channel is the most badass on the block, and you want to be a member. Subscribe right now. Do it. What? Okay, I saw, I saw you. I saw that. You got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that subscription. Peace.